Good evening, everybody. This is Gregory M. Bowles of Northwest UFO Chasers, and this will be radio broadcast. Who knows? Anyway, I had to do this tonight. This is going to be really special. My uh, grandson was born today on 3 17 2011. And it turns out that uh, my daughter is born on 3 17 1988. And uh, I am just, in one aspect, ecstatic to have a brand new grandson. But at the same time, I'm feeling like the rest of everybody in the United States over this, the nuclear uh, reactor meltdowns in Japan. And uh, I really want to pray for the Japanese. But I had to, I've been writing articles lately, and I know that a lot of you have read a lot of the articles that I have written. And as I was doing my research, it began to occur to me to look at life just a little bit differently, you know, in the perspective of, you know, this light-bodied essence uh, or our souls within our bodies. And if those are beacons of light, and we were to look at everybody, you know, down on earth, I've talked about this, um, and just identify each and every life entity. And then it, you know, it also occurs to me that not only is there a light within each human being, there is a light within every animal, insect, plant, tree, and there's this life essence and we're floating in this life essence if you will and we're transitioning through life very slowly and the evidence of the transition through time slowly is that everything is decaying around us we're obviously we we, we get older, I mean, that's obvious, but um, I want to give you a perspective and an understanding of this vision that I had, and I believe it to be a prophetic vision, but I was standing in the back rows of heaven itself singing to the glorification of God and for some reason it popped into my mind I was an angel singing not even aware of time itself moving and I was gloriously happy and I envisioned the Lord and at the Lord's right hand side were individuals and on his left hand side were individuals and I believe these individuals the names that were coming to me but this was coming to me telepathically or in my mind it, what they, they weren't I what I didn't wasn't reading them anywhere I was just seeing them and it was Elijah and Enoch Ezekiel Joshua Jacob and all those names in the Bible Mel Melchizedek and uh, I believe that at this point I I'm gonna digress here for a minute and uh, say that what we were, what I was seeing was that, and it, when I said I was going to digress, what I was going to go back to is 
through my, as you know, I'm author, writer, researcher, producer. The research part toward my doctorate in ancient cultures and civilizational studies. And I started to lay everything out on the timeline and started to see that uh, there's truth within the analysis of everything. And in other words, you know, you, we would read the mythological stories of the ancient cultures that we were that that we were studying, that I was studying. And in the ancient Sumerian cultures, mythologies of Zoroaster, uh, or we could talk about the mythological stories of the Danes, who are, yes, related to the Vikings, and yes, uh, but related to the Norm but they transitioned back to the Celtics. And then to understand that what I'm trying to say is the weighing of truth in everything gives us, in the analysis, it puts weight on the possibility that there was a god Odin of some kind. And uh, he had a son, Thor. And these great tales, and, and let's put some weight to the potential possibility that this could be true. And then the stories of Zoroaster and the ancient Sumerians and the tales of Enlil and Enkai and, this, and the ancient uh, tale of Gilgamesh, which is the story of Noah in the ancient Sumerian language, which we know of Noah's Ark. and we, so, so there begin to be these ties that lead us to the Bible, and then we put weight on the stories of the Bible. But there's not just the Bible. There's the Nag Hammadi and this whole body of text of the Nag Hammadi that was uncovered. And so there are, and, you, and, you, and there's a tremendous amount of reading to do, and you need to read some of the Gnostic Gospels, they're, they're completely incredible. As to the truths, they didn't have television and stuff back then. And so these, you know, men were walking the earth, you know. And, you know, during the times of Christ, there were Gnostic priests. And I believe myself to be a Gnostic priest from back in those times. In fact, I know because I've now had clarity of thought and I was given a gift and I am having total recall of all of my past lives I understand and see myself in this projection and so what I'm trying to say and I hope that I'm communicating I hope that some of you are following me uh, some of you are you know chalking me up to completely crazy but it doesn't matter because I can get this out there and uh, you know I don't care about being judged that's not the point the point is is that we're all a puzzle piece in this giant picture I don't have all of the answers but then again let's go back all of a sudden here to this vision I was having of the singing in the back rows of heaven in the glorification of God I believe that I fell for a female angel and God in, wanted me to give him my attention. And it's not as God was going to punish me or anything like that, because we know God is good. But he sent me back to go through of what we know in quantum physics, believe it or not, to be true, the 11 dimensions found in, and substantiated through algebraic equation of super string theory and this multi-dimensionality shows the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh dimensions. Now I wrote an article called God is Beyond the Eleventh Dimension and the reason I say that and this gets into the Mahabharata and the Vedic texts is because I believe us to be in the third dimension of illusory reality. 
and the reason that we're we've transitioned through the first and second dimensions and we're now in the third dimension of illusory reality and it's a duality of reality in the sense that there's positive and negative light and dark good and bad male female in this third dimension and again we realize that we are transitioning in time moving through what is termed transcendence by the prophets and the prophets that I'm specifically referring to and identifying here are Buddha Ramakrishna Jesus Muhammad and it's that simple that also by the way covers cultures and civilizational people around the world and can be substantiated by Dr. Spencer Wells and his genetic research at Stanford University and shows this patterning and with along with the patterning religion but again you need to identify on the timeline that I talk about at Northwest UFO chasers at the website up in the top left hand corner you'll find the timeline that those ancient prophets Jesus Christ Ramakrishna and Buddha all lived relatively at the same time within a couple thousand years of each other but this time scale or this vision in the prophetic vision getting back to that again singing in the back rows of heaven in the glorification of God and I fell for a female angel and again on the timeline if you look on the timeline you're gonna see the angels are listed there I'm gonna ha I'm gonna try to pronounce these names here uh, of the angels and uh, see there's the seraphim cherubim ophanim and that's the first levels by the way there was a Metatron who a lot of people talk about has this ability to do sacred geometry and the crop circle formations that are popping up around the earth are coincidentally just intertwined with sacred geometry and then this Metatron is making himself known to the earth and he's a first level angel but again did I say in the first level there's seraphim cherubim and ophanim and then in the second level there's the dominions and the virtues and the powers and we get all of this information from the books of Enoch okay and those are on the site too by the way but I want to show you where there was some things that got mixed up between alien intelligence and angels okay and where we get mixed up between aliens and angels is kind of interesting I mean again I'm gonna predicate all of this that I've just said with I don't have all of the answers I don't even pretend to have all of the answers all I can do is give you my puzzle piece and together all of us have a puzzle piece but let me tell you exactly where that puzzle piece is in each and every human being it's within the DNA why chromosomal makeup and that Y chromosome is something that is handed down from father to son father 
to daughter to grandson. And that's why this is a special tribute to my grandson, Hayden Carter Bond. Well, now, the other thing that was going on is that this great love between two angels were blown apart in the creation of the universe. of what we know to be the known universe as the third dimension of illusory reality. And man so desperately loves his counter half woman and they want to come back together. And we are here to learn in this realm but I'm here to tell you that you can move from this realm and have conscious contact with your creator in the 11th dimension. And one of the things that you need, we need to do is to move into the fourth dimension of time and the speed of thought and meditation and the endocrine glandular systems of the human body that Schwaller discovered in Egypt and on the site under Egypt you can find the links both from Carmen Bolter and Anthony West but it's in Anthony West's Magical Egypt, number four, that we find Schwaller and looking at the Temple of Man. And when we go back to ancient Egypt, what we find is, we find that the sacred geometry of fourth dimensional physics is shown to be everywhere in the giant statues that were built during a very greatly enlightened age and we had tooling of some kind going on these huge pits and the other day I was watching a show and it, what it was showing was oil pumping but they showed an old type pump with a rope around a giant wheel basically and attached to that wheel was a cog that was move up and down and I was thinking you know all they had to do was rot get that thing rotating with manpower and they could generate enough power to move tools to machine these huge granite blocks anyway again what we're looking at here is putting the weight of the truth in the elements and this bigger picture we're putting it together and I I don't have I don't pretend to have all the answers you help me with the answers we get things on the timeline we're putting it all together but that's uh, that was what was happening with me and I'm gonna end it at that well, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, don't forget, go to Northwest UFO Chasers website. Look around. Join our group.
on Facebook, right, right on the wall on the group on Facebook, there's a lot of people up there. There are some very special people up there. We're going to cover the subjects of abduction. We're going to cover some subjects dealing with cryptozoology. There's a strange looking mermaid on my site, by the way, uh, you know, in the cryptozoology. That's that stuff, and then that's where genetics gets into, you know, connecting heads on weird bodies and things like that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've still got to talk a little bit. I might talk a little bit about, let's jump, I'm, I'm going to jump into a subject here, the harp subject. Because it, uh, there is a conspiracy theory going around that harp being a high generator of massage, massive voltage, uh, they've changed that and developed a more advanced plasma weapon. And that plasma weapon may have been used to project something into our atmosphere that caused weather patterning to change around the Earth and that there are high societal entities in the Japanese government and the United States government that are... Uh, battling back and forth and they were warned and this was directed uh, somehow at this uh, site location and it intensified into an earthquake but now here's the thing okay we have three earthquakes that have hit on a map if you look at the Pacific Ocean you've got an earthquake that hit Australia you got an earthquake that hit Japan and then what is directly across the ocean from Australia is so is is a, is a location where the you know the other earthquake was and what i'm trying to say is i was looking at a map and so as a the four quadrants that we're looking at here the north East quadrant happens to be the west coast of the United States to include up there Alaska and down and around and we have a scientist that is saying that an earthquake is imminent so anyway uh, I I'm not even gonna project an answer I'm gonna let you come to some conclusions on your own I can only put the information out there I'm not saying I necessarily believe it all uh, it's pretty radical theory I was you know under the impression that harp was developed for good I don't know I don't know all the answers but I also do know that there's a there is a tie here to the vortex locations that are up on Facebook that I, I put up there and the Hesdalen vortex tunnel between Hesdalen and Mount Adams and then the advanced craft the TR-3B that the United States government seems to have but not want to admit and does that craft have the capability of warping through the vortex? And uh, by the way, that's up on the website on Northwest UFO Chasers under subjects uh, down in the alphabetically down at T, TR3B. You should all take a look at that. And also take a look at the Hez Dillon. Uh, but I think there's things going on with the black operational military 
and I and I believe that the that there's the budget. Uh, there's things being spent on secret space black operational projects. And this is why they're having a hard time, but they want to, in one way, keep the war going. And they keep the war going. And they don't want to scale back, and they don't want to pull out any sooner. But they're not spending all that money in theater. And in theater meaning in Iraq, in Iran, I mean, don't get me wrong, I understand there's problems, but they're creating subterfuge and scenarios for you to believe. And one of those things is that Iran's going to come in and steal the oil wells out of Iraq. Well, that, that might happen, you know. And we won the war, and we should get the spoils, like Donald Trump said. And with those spoils, that would bring oil prices down. And that would single-handedly help the economy of the United States. I've also got two solutions for the United States. And those are up on my blog. And I couldn't even begin to repeat. But the, you have to watch that video of that guy. And he has it all down and it only takes one year. And basically, you turn federal notes, you turn the bonds we have into federal notes, and somehow you give the, distribute those notes to the banks in the United States. And through that distribution, basically, we, you know, the Federal Reserve becomes a non-entity. And we can do that in one year. The other thing is, is we have hospitals with the top surgical doctors in the world in Thailand and India right now, and the one in Thailand, we could literally have satellite clinics in the United States that you could go to. And basically, you'd be provided a ticket from the United States government to fly over to Thailand to have your procedure because whatever it it costs, if it costs $3,000 in the United States, it's only 300 in Thailand. If it was $12,000, it's 1200 in Thailand. It's, you just knock a zero off. And they can also bill Medicare. So that's an automatic 90% reduction right there. Two simple solutions. Come on, wake up. Let's implement Let's get a handshake across the aisle between Democrats and Republicans. That's all we're asking. Let's be grown-ups and have enough dignity to come to a solution and a vote. The American people can live with it, but let's get our finances in order, implementing some simple solutions. People are ready. Anyway, that's it, man. Thanks a lot for listening. I really, really, really appreciate it. And uh, please, go to Facebook, leave your comments, and I'll uh, see you guys later.